Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to lecture 37 on measure and integration. If you recall in the previous lecture, we had started looking at the theorem called fundamental theorem of calculus for Lebesgue integrals. Uh, we will continue looking at uh, the same uh, in this lecture also and try to complete the arguments today. So, today's topic is going to be looking at fundamental theorem of calculus for Lebesgue integrals. If you recall, we had defined in the previous lecture what is called absolutely continuous functions which are absolutely continuous and showed that every absolutely continuous function is a function of bounded variation and hence it is a difference of two monotone functions and as a consequence it becomes differentiable almost everywhere. Of course, there exist functions of bounded variation that are not continuous and hence not absolutely continuous. We had looked at such things also and there exist functions of bounded variation that are continuous, but not absolutely continuous. Uh, in the previous lecture, we had also looked at uh, uh, the notion of uh, indefinite integral of integrable functions. So, we define what is called f of x as the indefinite integral a to x f t d lambda t, where f is a Lebesgue integrable function. And for such functions, we proved that these functions are uh, absolutely continuous. So, indefinite integral of Lebesgue integrable functions are examples of absolutely continuous functions. And essentially, fundamental theorem of calculus says that these are the only ways of getting absolutely continuous functions. And once it is uh, absolutely continuous, it also becomes a function of bounded variation and hence becomes differentiable almost everywhere. The main aim of fundamental theorem of calculus part 1 is to identify the derivative of uh, this function. So, if f is L 1 of a b and f of x is the indefinite integral of the in function f of t d lambda t, then we would like to show that the derivative this function f which is differentiable almost everywhere, its derivative is equal to uh, little f of x for almost all x belonging to a b. So, uh, to uh, we have already observed that this function is absolutely continuous, the indefinite integral is absolutely continuous and is differentiable almost everywhere. So, to prove uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus, we have only to identify its uh, derivative. So, for that we need uh, a lemma, uh, which uh, essentially says that for a uh, function, integrable function, if its function is differentiable, if uh, uh, it says that if an uh, integrable function which is monotonically increasing, then of course, uh, it is differentiable almost everywhere by Lebesgue's theorem and the, the uh, lemma says that the derivative becomes integrable and the integral of the derivative for this monotone function is less than or equal to f of b minus f of a. So, this is uh, a lemma that we will require. So, we will prove this lemma first. So, to prove this lemma, we first uh, note that being monotonically increasing, this function is a measurable function. The reason for that is every monotonically increasing function uh, is uh, a function which is continuous almost everywhere. Uh, that is a theorem normally proved in uh, basic courses in real analysis. So, if a function is monotone, it is uh, continuous almost everywhere and hence uh, measurable. So, that is one way of looking at a monotone function and proving it is measurable or uh, there is a direct uh, you can use also the definition and look at the inverse image of an interval then it is also going to be an uh, interval for a monotonically increasing function or a union of uh, two intervals at the most. So, uh, that is another way of looking at uh, the measurability of monotone functions. So, every monotonically increasing function is a measurable function and uh, by Lebesgue's uh, theorem in fact, it becomes differentiable almost everywhere and the derivative let us denote it by f dash of x. So, let us define g n of x to be equal to f of x plus 1 over n 
minus f of x divided by 1 over n whenever x belongs to a b and uh, uh, let us this is not f of x uh, let us uh, extend f outside the interval a b to be as f of b. So, for x bigger than b we will treat f of x as f of b. So, for example, when this is b, b plus 1 over n will be treated as f of b. So, g n is a function uh, which is the increment of f uh, at the point x by uh, an increment in x by uh, 1 by n. So, clearly uh, because the function f is differentiable, uh, this function g n x converges to the derivative of the function f whenever the derivative exists. So, the first uh, claim is that each of this g n is a measurable function and g n x converges to f dash of x for almost all x. That g n is a measurable function that is obvious because f is measurable. So, uh, f of x plus 1 over n this function is a translate of the fun measurable function is measurable. So, difference of measurable functions and divided by a constant that is a measurable function. So, g n x is a measurable function converging almost everywhere to the derivative of the function uh, f dash of x. Let us compute apply photos lemma to this. So, and uh, that by photos lemma we know that first of all uh, note that uh, g n x also is a non negative function because f is a monotonically increasing function. So, the numerator f of x plus 1 over n minus f of x divided by 1 over n that is a non negative function. So, g n is a sequence of non negative measurable functions converging almost everywhere to f dash of x. So, by Fatou's uh, lemma first of all uh, f dash is a measurable function because it is a limit of measurable functions and by Fatou's lemma the integral of f dash of x which is the limit of uh, g n s will be less than or equal to limit inferior of g n over a to b. So, Fatou's lemma says that the if a sequence of uh, non negative functions uh, converges to a function, then the integral of the limit inferior is less than or equal to limit inferior of the integrals. So, this is a direct consequence of Fatou's lemma applied to the function g n. And next, uh, let us compute this quantity uh, and put the value of g n. g n is equal to f of x plus 1 over n minus f of x. So, this integral splits into two integrals n times integral a to b f of x plus 1 over n d lambda minus n times integral a to b f x d lambda x. Let us uh, uh, use the fact that Lebesgue measure is translation invariant. So, this integral a to b f of x plus 1 over n can be written as integral a plus 1 over n to b plus 1 over n of f x d lambda x. So, here we are using the property that the Lebesgue measure is uh, translation invariant. So, the right hand side is limit inferior n going to infinity of n times integral a plus 1 over n to b plus 1 over n f x d lambda x minus the integral a to b. So, now using the fact that the Lebesgue integral is additive over the limits of integration. So, this difference is nothing but so a to a plus 1 over n and then 1 over b um, a. So, this integral a to a plus 1 over a to b can be written as a to uh, a plus 1 over n and the second integral, integral being a plus 1 over n to b. So, these uh, two difference will give us the difference namely this is nothing but b to uh, b plus 1 over n f x d x minus n times a to a plus 1 over n f x d x. So, here we are using the property that the integral is additive over the limits of integration. And now, we, we use the fact that f is a monotonically increasing function. So, uh, the first integral is b to b 1 b plus 1 over n, but we have defined f of x to be equal to b whenever x exceeds b plus 1 over n. So, the first integral uh, is nothing but uh, uh, f of b divided by 1 over n n cancels. So, first integral is just f of b minus. Uh, so, limit inferior of minus n integral, but recall the fact that the limit inferior of minus uh, of a sequence is equal to minus of the limit superior. So, this becomes minus limit superior n integral a to a plus 1 over n f x of 
d x. And now, use the fact that um, f is a uh, monotone function. So, this f, f uh, integral of f of x from a to a plus 1 over n will be less than or equal to uh, f of uh, a for the whole interval in length of interval is 1 over n. So, this is uh, less than or equal to is a monotonically increasing function. So, we are putting the uh, value f of a. So, it is f of a divided by n into n and that is independent of the limit superior. So, that is just uh, uh, f of b minus f of a. So, here we have used the fact that f is a monotonically increasing function. So, that proves the, the lemma namely if f is monotonically increasing then its derivative function is integrable and uh, the integral of the derivative function. So, integral of f dash a to b f x d x is less than or equal to f of b minus f of a. So, this uh, lemma we will be using in the proof of uh, the theorem fundamental theorem of calculus part 1. So, let us prove the theorem fundamental theorem of calculus part 1. So, we want to uh, so, we want to prove that the integral a to x f of t d lambda t this function f of x for x between a and b we want to show that this is differentiable that we of course, we know already that it is differentiable with the derivative f dash of x equal to f of x for of almost everywhere. So, this is what we want to prove. So, as a first step we are saying that let us assume that the function. So, step 1 is that we may assume f is bigger than or equal to 0. So, the reason for that is f. So, reason for that is because f belongs to L 1 of a b. So, f can be written as the positive part minus the negative part of the function and recall that f plus f minus both are non negative functions and f plus and f minus both belong to L 1 of a b. So, as a consequence of this the, the function f of x can be written as integral a to x f plus t d t minus a to b f minus t d t. So, if we call this function as f 1 of x and the second function as f 2 of x, then both f 1 and f 2. So, f 1 is the indefinite integral of f plus t d t and f 2 of t f 2 of x is indefinite integral a to x of f minus t d t. The important thing to note uh, in this is that both f plus and f minus are non negative integrable functions. So, in case we have already proved the theorem for the non negative integral functions, this will imply that f 1 dash of x is equal to f plus of x and f 2 dash of x is equal to f minus of x. And hence, as a consequence of uh, this, we will have that f 1 minus f 2 dash of x is equal to f 1 x plus f 2 uh, sorry minus f 2 dash of x. And this ends uh, by the uh, step 1, if it is already true for non negative uh, integrable functions this is f plus of x almost everywhere and that is f minus of x almost everywhere and that is equal to f of x almost everywhere. So, that will prove that f dash of x. So, implying f dash of x is equal to f of x almost everywhere x. So, if we can prove the theorem for non negative uh, integrable functions then we will be through. So, step 1 says let us assume f is uh, non negative. Second step says let us assume that the function is a bounded function and let us prove the result when f is a bounded function. So, for that so we will assume for the time being that f is a bounded function 
and let us uh, assume m is the constant such that f of x is less than or equal to m bigger than or equal to 0 for every x belonging to a b. In that case, let us define f n of x to be equal to f of x plus 1 over n minus f of x divided by 1 over n whenever x belongs to a b, where as usual f of uh, x plus 1 over n is defined as equal to f of b for x bigger than or equal to b. Then each of f n is a measurable function. In fact, uh, each uh, f n is an absolutely continuous function and hence uh, is also measurable and f n x converges to f dash of x for almost all x belonging to a b, because it is function is differentiable almost everywhere being absolutely continuous. So, the derivative exists almost everywhere and the right hand side is nothing but converging to the derivative of the function f of x. And since we have assumed that f is a bounded measurable function, f is bounded. So, this capital F also is a bounded measurable function, because capital F and f x is less than or equal to n times this 1 over n gives you n times f of x plus 1 over n is the integral from x to x plus 1 over n of f of t d lambda t. So, this difference numerator is nothing but the integral from x to x plus 1 over n f t d lambda t and this is less than or equal to integral uh, absolute value of the integral is less than or equal to integral of the absolute value and hence this absolute value is less than or equal to n times absolute value of m f which is less than uh, m into the length of the interval which is a 1 over n. So, that cancels. So, this is less than or equal to m. So, f n is a sequence of uh, measurable functions and each of them is bounded by a constant m and we are over a finite space a b. So, Lebesgue's bounded convergence theorem or also the dominated we can call it as the dominated convergence theorem says that for every uh, c belonging to a b, if we apply it over the interval a to c, then integral over a to c f prime t d lambda t uh, is equal to limit of the functions f n t d, lam, d lambda t. So, here we are applying bounded convergence theorem or uh, dominated convergence theorem. So, that gives you because f n converges to f dash and all of them are integrable functions. So, integral a to c uh, of f prime t d lambda t is equal to limit n going to infinity a to c f n t uh, d lambda of t. And now, uh, we will uh, write down uh, the values of f n. So, what is f n? f n is equal to n times f of t plus 1 over n minus f of t divided by 1 over n. So, this f n, this integral a to c is nothing but n times integral a to c of f of t plus 1 over n d lambda t minus the second term that is n times a to c f of t uh, d lambda t. So, now uh, we will use the fact that this uh, integral uh, is with respect to lambda which is translation invariant. So, the first integral which is f of t plus 1 over n can be written as integral of f of t d lambda t from a plus 1 over n to c plus 1 over n. So, the first integral is transformed to n times integral a plus 1 over n to c plus 1 over n f of t d lambda t and of course, the second integral remains as n times a to c f of t d lambda t. So, this is using the fact that the Lebesgue measure is translation invariant and now once again as we have seen earlier integral Lebesgue integral being additive over the limits of integration. So, this integral from a plus 1 over n to c plus 1 over n minus the integral a to c gives us the integral of f of t from c to 1 plus 1 over n to integral from a to a plus 1 over n of f t d lambda t. And now, we use the fact that f is a non-negative uh, monotonically increasing function and this is uh, why is this capital F non-negative monotonically increasing function? because the function small f. So, the reason for that is the so claim is that this function f of x which is defined as a to x f t d lambda t then f 
f of x is monotonically increasing and the reason is because f is non negative. So, that implies that for y bigger than x f of y which is minus f of x will be equal to integral x to y of f t d lambda t which is bigger than or equal to 0. So, that implies that the function f t is uh, monotonically increasing. So, since the function f is uh, of course, a non negative you are integrating a non negative function and it is monotonically increasing. So, the integral c to c plus 1 over n f t d lambda t will be bigger than or equal to uh, the value at the lower end point so that is f of c into the length of the interval 1 over n into n. So, that gives you f of c. So, the first integral is n times c 2 c plus 1 over n is bigger than or equal to f of c and of course, it is less than or equal to uh, the value at the upper end point into the length of the interval. So, that gives you f of c f at c plus 1 over n. So, that is the first integral is between f of c and f of c plus 1 over n and similarly, the second integral is between f of a and f of a plus 1 over n. And now, these two inequalities along with the fact that the function capital F is absolutely continuous and hence continuous uh, gives that as n goes to infinity f of a plus 1 over n is going to go to f of a. So, the second integral will go to f of a which is equal to 0 and the first integral will go to f of c because it is sandwiched between f of c and f of c plus 1 over n. So, that implies that the limit n going to infinity of n times the integral c to c plus 1 over n f t d lambda t minus a to a plus 1 over n f t d lambda t is equal to f of c which is equal to uh, nothing but a to c of f t d lambda t. So, what we have shown is that the integral of the derivative of capital F. So, integral of the derivative of capital F for uh, over the interval a to c is equal to integral over a to c of small f of t d lambda t. And this holds for all values of c between a and b and that implies because these two are equal. So, that uh, implies uh, that um, small f of t uh, must be equal. So, this is uh, a mistake uh, we should be writing at um, f dash of t capital F dash of t must be equal to small f of t. So, what we are saying is integrals of uh, two uh, functions non negative functions are equal over all integrals all uh, intervals of the type a to c where c belongs to a to b that means the two functions must be equal almost everywhere. So, f prime of t must be equal to f of t for almost all t. So, that proves the fact that the derivative of the function f of capital F of t is nothing but small f of t. So, here the two written wrongly it should be capital F dash of t is equal to small f of t. So, that proves the fundamental theorem of calculus for bounded non negative integrable functions. For the general case when f is a general non negative function one uses uh, what is called uh, the truncation of the function f. So, uh, we will just give you outline. So, namely what one does is look at the function f on f x which is f of x uh, if f of x is less than or equal to n and is equal to n if f of x is bigger than n. So, whenever the graph of the function goes beyond n you cut it and put it equal to n. So, if this f of n is called the truncation of the function f beyond n. So, each uh, f n is a non negative uh, integrable function and these f n's converge to uh, the function f for uh, every x belonging to a b. So, one uh, so defines g n of x to be equal to a to x f minus f n t d lambda t. Then g n is a, a sequence of functions which is absolutely continuous because it is a difference of uh, it is an indefinite integral of a uh, integrable function and it is uh, monotonically increasing because the function uh, f n f minus f n is uh, non negative. So, g n is a se increasing sequence of functions 
and it is derivative g n of x non negative for every x. Okay? Because it is a monotonically increasing function, so its derivative must be non negative and it exists because it is absolutely a continuous function. So, let us look at uh, note the function f of x which is g n of x minus a 2 x f n t uh, d lambda t that is the indefinite integral of a to x f of x d x from here, because this integral g n of x is a to x f minus f n d lambda t. So, that is integral a to x f d lambda t minus integral of f n. So, if you take it on the other side, we get f of x is equal to g n x plus a to x f n t uh, d lambda t. And from here, because uh, f dash exists for almost everywhere, so by the earlier case, we have got that f n is a non negative uh, bounded measurable function. So, applied when we apply the earlier case to this indefinite integral, its derivative exists and is equal to small f n. So, that gives us that for almost all x, f dash of x is equal to g n dash of x plus f n of x for almost all x belonging to x. So, that and g n this is non negative. So, that implies that f dash of x must be bigger than or equal to f of x for every n and for almost all x belonging to x. And this is happening for all n. So, in the limit that gives us that f dash of x is bigger than or equal to f of x for all x belonging to a b. But on the other hand, we know that integral of f dash of x is less than or equal to f b minus f of a, which is nothing but a to x f x d lambda x. So, that uh, implies that the integral of f dash of x minus small f of x is equal to 0 over the interval a to b. So, this is a non negative function whose integral is 0 that means, this function f dash of x must be equal to uh, f of x for almost all x belonging to a b. So, that completes the proof of fundamental theorem of calculus part 1 namely the indefinite uh, integral of a function from a to b f x. Uh, if I take an indefinite integral a to x f t d lambda t for a integrable function, then this indefinite integral is absolutely continuous and hence derivative exists. And not only that, the derivative f dash of x is equal to small f of x for almost all x belonging to a to b. So, this is fundamental theorem calculus part 1, which corresponds to the fundamental theorem of calculus part 1 of Riemann integrable functions. Namely, if you take a function f, which is continuous on an interval a b, then the indefinite integral is differentiable everywhere and the derivative is equal to small f. In this case, for Lebesgue integrable functions, we get that the indefinite integral is an absolutely continuous function of course, and it is differentiable almost everywhere and derivative is equal to the integrand f of x for almost all x. If you recall the fundamental theorem of calculus also had the second part for Riemann integrable functions namely, if you integrate the derivative then you get back the values of the function. So, a corresponding result is true for Lebesgue integrable functions also. So, we would like to prove that. So, the claim is that if f is uh, absolutely uh, continuous. So, its derivative exists almost everywhere and the claim is that if we integrate the derivative, derivative is an integrable function and its integral is nothing but uh, the values of the original function. So, to prove that we need uh, a theorem, we need a lemma which will not prove, uh, which says that if g is an absolutely continuous function and its derivative is equal to 0 almost everywhere, then g is a uh, constant function. Uh, this is, uh, if you recall, that is also uh, required. So, a similar result is required for uh, functions uh, which are Riemann integrable and in the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2. Namely, if g is a function whose derivative is equal to 0 everywhere, then the function is a constant function. So, this is a, a parallel of that result uh, for absolutely continuous functions. So, if for a absolutely continuous function the derivative is equal to 0 almost everywhere, then the function is a constant function. So, we will assume this result and for a uh, because a proof requires uh, is a slightly technical proof and requires the use of uh, what is called Vitelli's covering theorem, 
which we have not covered in this uh, part of the lectures. So, those interested uh, can look up at the proof in the textbook which is referred earlier. So, the result lemma is that if a function is absolutely continuous and its derivative is 0 almost everywhere, then the function is a constant function. So, using that we will prove uh, fundamental theorem of calculus part 2 namely which says that if f is uh, absolutely continuous function, then of course, we know that the derivative exists almost everywhere. And the claim is that the derivative is a integrable function and the integral of the derivative from x to y is equal to f y minus f of x for all points x less than y between a and b. So, that will uh, complete uh, the proof of the fund uh, that will com complete the statement and analysis of fundamental theorem of calculus. So, to prove this let us uh, look that uh, the function capital F which is given to be absolutely continuous and every absolutely continuous function is of bounded variation and hence we can write f as a difference of two monotone functions, monotonically increasing functions say f 1 and f 2, where f both f 1 and f 2 are monotonically increasing functions. And of course, uh, by fundamental uh, theorem of calculus, we know that f 1 uh, dash exists, derivative f dash exists by fundamental theorem of calculus and it being a difference of two monotone functions, which are also differentiable almost everywhere by uh, Lebesgue's theorem. So, the derivative is equal to f 1 dash x minus f 2 dash x for almost all x. So, f of x can be written as f 1 dash x minus f 2 dash x for almost all x. And now, uh, because uh, f 1 and f 2 are monotonically increasing functions, so their derivatives are integrable uh, functions. So, that follows from the lemma that we just now proved for the monotonically increasing functions the derivative exists and are integrable. So, as a consequence we get f 1 dash is integrable, f 2 dash is integrable and being a difference of two integrable functions the function capital F is dash is also integrable. And not only that we also have that f 1 of x is less than or equal to a to x f 1 dash of t d lambda t that was also a part of the lemma. And similarly, f 2 of x is also less than or equal to a to x f 2 dash of t d lambda t. So, as a consequence we get f dash is L 1 that we have already observed. So, let us write g of x as equal to a to x f dash of t d lambda t. So, what we want to prove is that this g of x is f of x minus f of a which is 0. So, we want to prove g of x is equal to f of x. So, now let us observe that if we define g of x to be equal to this, then we that g of x is absolutely continuous, its derivative exists and derivative is equal to uh, f dash for almost all x. So, g dash is equal to f dash of x for almost all x and we know that this is uh, a function g of x, uh, its derivative is equal to uh, 0 almost everywhere and g of x is an absolutely continuous function. So, by the lemma just now we stated the g of x is an absolutely continuous function whose derivative is equal to f dash of x. So, that implies that the function g of x must be equal to f of x for almost all x. So, that completes the proof of fundamental theorem of calculus part 2. So, fundamental theorem of calculus uh, has two parts. So, let me once again uh, recall fundamental theorem of calculus. It says that if f is L 1 of a b, then that implies that the integral f of t d lambda t a to x x belonging to a to b is. So, if we call this function as capital F of x, then f dash of x exists almost everywhere and f dash of x is equal to f of x almost everywhere. So, that is fundamental theorem of calculus part 1 and fundamental theorem of uh, calculus part 2 says that if f a to b is 
absolutely continuous, then this implies that the derivative exists of course, because absolutely continuous implies it is differentiable almost everywhere is L 1 of a b and integral of f dash of t d lambda t say a 2 x is equal to f of x. So, these two put together are called fundamental theorem of uh, calculus for uh, Lebesgue integrals. As a consequence, if you uh, recall, if you recall that for functions, uh, if you recall for Riemann integrable functions, fundamental theorem of calculus gives many consequences, essentially saying that the derivative uh, integration of the derivative is equal to the function uh, gives consequences like integration by parts, it gives you integration by substitution, it gives you chain rule and so on. Similarly, the Lebesgue integral uh, fundamental theorem of uh, integral calculus for Lebesgue integrals uh, gives all similar results. We illustrate this by giving one result called integration by parts. So, integration by parts states the following namely supposing f and g are two functions which are absolutely continuous functions. Then the claim is that because they are absolutely continuous, so the derivatives exist. So, the claim is that f of b into g of b minus f of a g of a is equal to integral a to b of f dash g d lambda t plus integral a to b f g dash d lambda t. So, basically it is same as for one very as for Riemann integral that if f and g are absolutely continuous, then we know that f dash exists. So, it says integral of f dash g d lambda t is nothing but if you take it on the other side, it is same as you look at the integral of f dash which is going to be f of b. So, it is f of f into g evaluated at b minus evaluated at a minus the integral f g dash. So, that is precisely the integration by parts for uh, Riemann integrable functions. So, uh, a proof of this is obvious from the fundamental theorem of calculus. Let me illustrate that. So, first note that since f and g are both absolutely continuous, so it follows that the product function f g is absolutely continuous that we have already indicated and hence it is differentiable almost everywhere. In Riemann integrable functions, it is just saying that f and g are differentiable, so product is differentiable. Here, because they are absolutely continuous, so the product is absolutely continuous and hence is differentiable almost everywhere. And further, by the uh, product rule for differentiation, the derivative of the product fun function of course, is equal to f into g dash is equal to f multiplied by g dash at x plus f dash into g at x for almost all x in the interval a to b. So, this is just wherever the function is differentiable, the, um, the derivative of the product is equal to f g dash plus uh, f dash of g and this is true almost everywhere. So, this is equal to almost uh, everywhere. Once that is true, now we can apply fundamental theorem of calculus power 2. So, we can integrate uh, f g dash. So, integrate both sides. So, integral of f g dash will give us f b minus f b into g b minus f of a into g of a, because this will give us the integral will give you the value of the function at b minus the value of the function at a, the function being the product function f into g. So, the left hand side is f b g b minus f a g a and the right hand side is the integral of f g dash x plus f dash g x for almost all x. So, that is the right hand side. So, that is called the integration by uh, parts. Uh, similarly, uh, other results like um, integration by substitution and so on can be obtained by using chain rule and other things. So, those interested should refer the textbook for the same. So, basically what we have tried to uh, prove in the last two lectures is that for uh, corresponding to uh, the theorem, corresponding to the theorem on the fundamental theorem of calculus for Riemann integrable functions, there is a theorem for Lebesgue integrable functions and it says that a function capital F from A to B defined on real values is absolutely continuous if and only if 
it is the integral of its derivative function and that basically saying that because it is absolutely continuous the derivative exists and the integral of the derivative is nothing but function can be obtained as the integral of the derivative. So, this is a perfect uh, extension of uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus for uh, Lebesgue integrable functions. So, the notion uh, and in this uh, proving this fundamental theorem of calculus we needed the notion of absolute continuity of functions. This absolute continuity of functions is related in another way to the properties of measures called absolutely continuous functions, uh, absolutely continuous measures. So, uh, in the coming today and in the next lecture, we will look at what are called absolutely continuous measures. So, let us define what is a absolutely continuous measure. So, let x uh, s mu be a uh, given measure space and let f be a non negative real valued measurable functions on it. Let us define for any measurable set E in the sigma algebra S nu of E to be integral over E of f d mu. So, the right hand side is a number which depends on E. So, nu of E is the integral of f with respect to the measure mu over the set E. So, this gives us a set function E going to nu of E and if you recall we had shown that nu is a measure on the measure measurable space x s and has a very special property namely if this set E over which you are integrating the function f has got mu measure 0, then obviously this implies that nu of that set E is also equal to 0. So, the so this measure nu which is defined via integration with respect to the measure mu is related these two measures are related by the property that nu of the set E is equal to 0 whenever the measure mu of the set E is equal to 0. So, if a measure nu is defined via integration then the null sets of mu are also null sets of E. So, this property is known as absolutely continuous continuity of measures. So, let us write this define two measures mu and nu are said to be absolutely continuous with respect to. Uh, so, we say that the measure nu is absolutely continuous with respect to the measure mu if nu of E is equal to 0 whenever mu of E equal to 0. So, nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu whenever the null sets of mu are also null sets of nu and this we write as nu with these two arrows less than uh, less than uh, double uh, sign of less signifies that nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu. So, it is easier to remember mu of E equal to 0 implies nu of E equal to 0. Let us give some examples of uh, absolutely continuous measures. Of course, just now we uh, said that if you take a non negative function f which is integrable or even just a measurable for non negative measurable function on the measure space x s and integrate it with respect to nu, then integral of f over e with respect to mu gives you a measure nu which is absolutely continuous. So, this measure nu is absolutely continuous. Let us look at uh, the counting measure on the Lebesgue measure space that is a real line. So, what is the counting measure? For every set E in R, the counting measure mu of E is defined as the number of elements in the set E. If E is a finite set and it is defined as mu of E equal to infinity, if E is a uh, set which is not finite. So, for finite sets mu of E is the number of elements in E and for a infinite set it is the number we call it as plus infinity. Then we claim that lambda is absolutely continuous with respect to mu, where mu is the Lebesgue measure. So, we want to prove the following fact let us observe. So, mu is counting measure. and lambda is Lebesgue measure. So, claim 
claim is that lambda is absolutely continuous with respect to me, with respect to mu. So, to show that, let us take a set E, which is Lebesgue measurable, and mu of E equal to zero. But that means this implies what are the sets for which um, mu is the counting measure. So, the say if a measure of a counting measure of a set is equal to 0, that means E must be equal to empty set and that. So, for counting measure empty set is the only set of measure 0. So, that obviously implies lambda of uh, phi which is same as lambda of E equal to 0. So, that implies obviously that lambda is absolutely uh, continuous with respect to the counting measure and this is happening because for counting measure only null set is the empty set. Let us take x to be equal to the set of all natural numbers and s to be the set of all power set of natural numbers namely all subsets of natural numbers. And let us define two measures mu and nu say that mu of empty set is same as nu of empty set is 0 and for every other set which is not empty set let us define mu of e to be equal to sigma of 2 to the power n whenever the natural number n belongs to E and nu of E to be summation of 1 over 2 to the power n for all natural numbers n belonging to E. It is easy to check that these two sets, uh, two uh, set functions mu and nu are measures on the measure space x and s. Then if, if mu of E is equal to 0, let us assume that mu of E is equal to 0. This is possible only when only when this E is an empty set and similarly nu of E is also equal to 0 when E is equal to empty set. So, mu and nu are two measures which have only empty set as the null sets. So, that clearly proves that mu of E is equal to 0 if and only if nu of E is equal to 0. Hence, that says mu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu and nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu. So, uh, these are uh, some of the examples of absolutely continuous measures, but they uh, as you would have noticed these are obvious examples of absolutely continuous measures and the only non trivial way we got absolutely continuous measures was the first example where uh, nu was defined as integral of a non negative function uh, with respect to a measure mu. And uh, there is no wonder that we are not able to get any examples, because there is a very strong powerful theorem, which says that the only way one can obtain absolutely continuous measures are via integration. That means, that example of um, that when you integrate you get absolutely continuous measures are the only ways of obtaining absolutely continuous measures. And this uh, leads to a theorem called radon nicodem theorem which is very powerful and very useful and we will prove it in the, our next lecture. Thank you.